everyone. I'm Karen of the Being Conformed Food Blog and today I'd like to show you how I make gluten-free red enchiladas. I have all the ingredients assembled. We will need 10 pastured eggs, some filtered water, 2 pounds of grass-fed ground beef, 3 cups of shredded cheese. I like to use the Kerrygold Dubliner. We'll need a quarter cup of red chili powder, I have the Mountain Rose Herbs brand with mixed with a little bit of some spicier um, red chili powder and I have a teaspoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of garlic salt and a teaspoon of onion granules as well as a quarter teaspoon of turmeric because it's always good to put that in where you can. I try to use um, organic ingredients um, whenever I can because that way you can avoid both the pesticides as well as the GMOs. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is melt our ghee and add our ground beef. We're going to break it up and continue to break it up as you cook over moderate heat until done. You want it to be um, relatively small pieces. You don't want any big chunks of ground beef in your enchilada. So we're going to add our red chili powder and just sprinkle it on top and then mix it in. And once that's mixed, you want to turn your heat down to a medium low and just let that kind of cook for a couple of minutes and make sure that it's well mixed with the meat. Once that's combined well, we're going to add our spices. So I'll just take and sprinkle those over the top as well. That's our garlic, salt, onion granules, cumin and that little bit of turmeric. So we're just going to mix that up well. And I'm just going to let that simmer there for just a couple of more minutes. While I get the water ready to add. Okay, the seasonings and chili powder have um, pretty much absorbed all of the grease. So now we're ready to add our water. So I'm going to start with two cups. I'm going to pour that in and see how it looks. Quite enough. I think I'm going to put about one more cup. I want it so that it's just barely covering the hamburger meat. Okay, and then I'm going to take that tablespoon of arrowroot powder that I had um, set aside and I'm going to mix in about a spoonful of water and then I'm going to mix that up. a paste. Put a little more water. You want to add just enough so that it will blend well and be not a paste but uh, able to pour into the chili mixture. Okay, so I'm going to add that. 
that in. And that will help to thicken it. Now we're just going to let that um, cook on low. I'm going to turn that down to just a little low simmer. And we're going to let that cook for a little bit while we make our crepes. And this should be ready by the time our crepes are made. Okay, we have our sauce simmering. And so I'm going to, I've taken a just a very small amount of ghee and have um, lightly coated the pan just to get started. You don't, you won't need to do that again. I've got our pastured eggs um, all in a bowl, and I'm ready to whisk those. And I have a a platter to put the finished crepes on as they come out of the pan. So have the pan on a medium heat. Once the pan heats up to a good temperature, then it will um, go relatively quickly. So you just want to whisk these until they're the white and the yolk are well combined. You want to put an amount equal to approximately about half of an egg. So if you were to whisk an egg and then put half that amount in the pan, that's what you're going for here. <clears throat> Just going to start with a little bit. There we go. And then we want to quickly swirl it around in the bottom of the pan. And <clears throat> I know the first one is a little bit tricky. It's just a very, very thin coating. You want to let that cook. A moment. It only it doesn't take much time at all. I'm just gonna loosen the edges a little bit here. And the nice thing about this recipe and these crepes are that they don't have to be perfect, and they won't be. Just want to get the. Once you get them started, it's fairly easy if you can get a hold of the edge to just flip it. So, and I just want to cook it for about 30 seconds longer on that side. And I'm going to set it over here on my platter. We're going to take this out, set that back on there, and repeat. Just want a little bit, swirl it quickly, and then if it happens that it, it didn't quite cover, you can fill in the part that doesn't have egg on the pan. That way you don't have to waste that by throwing it out. You do need to have a solid piece in order to roll the meat and cheese up. So you just um, work with it and fill in the, the holes and that seems to work out pretty well. So, I'm going to cook this one. I'm just going to lay them out around this platter as I go so that they don't, um, I don't want to stack them up in a straight pile because then they'll have a tendency to 
stick and tear, but if you overlap them on a on a platter, they'll they'll do fine.